This is Armory Digital, the home of the NRSL 500. Hi, this is your boy, 8675309858X. I just want to say, first off, thank you everyone for all the uh, support and amazing stuff you guys have done throughout the six years you guys have done here for the NRSL. And for, for you guys, I wouldn't be here today doing my thing. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to each and every one of you guys who also have signed up. Now, let's get on with the show. The sixth annual NRSL 500 ticket place. Last time we were here. It was the trucks, and it was the closest finish not only we've ever had of this type of special race, or any special race, but any race of any series of any channel for this one here. So, without further ado, let's get to your starting lineup. On the pole, we got Dylan Hothi. Starred second is Seth Cole. Third, Kyle Keith. Fourth, Levi McIntyre. Fifth, it's Alex Drain. Sixth, Jake Bathinger. Seventh, Jonathan Dorland. Eighth, Kev Shear. Ninth, Emmanuel Hardy. Queen of the top ten is Tony Green. And go to this here. Then we got Alexander Rowe, Diego Yepes, Jeffrey Finguy, Brandon Crasta, Michael Walton, Paul Minnick, Carter Frisson, Angel Navarro. I just said a pulse right there. Johnny Gardner, Justin Scott, Phil Parker, Ian Siegel, Sky Commons, William Brock, Vince Almorego, Joshua Osborne, Zach Winkle, TJ Curtis, Trent Dunham, Brett Pritchard. Justin Thomas, R.J. Bishop, Cole Deaver, Kip Moore, Zach Flickinger, Clint Spillman, Zach Rogers, J.T. Bryant, James Walls, Connor Meyer, and in our final row for this race, Zachary Fitzwater and Benjamin Miles. So some key notables here that uh, are making their first ever starts in this thing here. Uh, you got Tony Green, Diego Yepes making his first ever in the, in the special races, uh, Carter Fritzen. Justin Scott, Ian Siegel for this exact race. Uh, Joshua Osborne. Justin Thomas. Went more in this one. And that is it. So we're about ready to get the command to fire the engine. So we go down trackside here to get those famous words in motorsports. Drivers, stop your engines! Well, folks, the command's been given. We're about ready to turn them loose here for 39 laps. We have our ticker up. All 42 cars rolling on off. It is go time. Give me a second to reach over something across my room so I get um, where I'm at here. Make sure everything's set to go. So give me just a second. I'm going to be off the mic real quick. Pace car is on down pit road. I just had to turn something on in my room, that's all. But we're about ready to turn them loose for the biggest race of the year. Dylan Posey, Seth Cole, two very well-known drivers of the community who have been around in the inner cell since the beginning. Are going to let them run wild. Green flag! The sixth inner cell, inner cell 500 is green. Looks like completing lap number one. It's going to be a side-by-side -side battle between Dylan Pozzi and Kyle Keith. And to the line, it'll be, wow, close battle. But Dylan Pozzi will lead the first lap of this race. And now Kyle Keith, probably one of the one of the guys out there who has been running wild in the inner cell. Here's is doing his thing. 
Now the main question is this, though, is how this race progresses. What will we see that's really going to help these drivers out when we get to that white flag lap? When all bets are off, and it'll be down to just, you know, the final lap of that race, bound for that win. Anything and everything can and will happen as Alex Drain's going to lead that lap. Who knows what we can see, though. guy now out in front and here's the 92 of Joshua Osborne in second position about a third three wide that's Johnny Gardner on the inside line going underneath the partner and Alex Drayton now he's gonna maybe get moved to that high line nope not so fast gonna stay in that low line right now at, at uh that, that's the 51 I want to say 51 of Brett Richard he's trying to move that 14 to the high line now he does so So far, though, you're seeing a lot of three, four wide racing that's taken place. But I think the main question that's going to take place is when we we really go out in that run. Who is really going to come on out and get this win? I mean, anybody can. It's hard to really say, though, who's really going to come on out and take the W here for this team, for this race. Because this is one of the biggest special races out there. And how about Carter Frisson being his first ever lap at the NRSL 500? And you see, you see the underdogs coming into play here because that that's what it's all about. You know, it, it is a lot of underdog, you know, prestige type of, you know, events like this that takes place. But I think the thing that really separates a lot of people here is that, you know, it doesn't matter the experience. The underdogs really have the better, you know, advantage than the others. But, you know, sometimes even underfunded rides. That's what some people you've seen have been doing in the past, you know, like just to name a few, you know, you got Cole Deaver in the 33 driving the Jeffrey Earnhardt uh, machine there. You got DJ Curtis in the DJ Kennington machine. You got Quentin Moore in the 52, Ian Siegel in the 75. Then you got the 92 of Joshua Osborne, the 72 of Clint Spillman. And you also got the two fictionals of the 40, how keeping the five of uh, Zach Winkle. Then you've seen the pack of 34 and the 38 and the 62. Yeah, I could just go on and on. There are some underfunded rides that could really go on out there and just be an absolute, you know, amazing thing there. But it's hard to really say, though, who is really going to come out on top. Now the 41. R.J. Bishop going to the inside. Now Clint Spillman to the inside. So far, we haven't seen anyone scrape that wall yet, which is a good sign. However, as we later progress in this race, we'll start seeing that. Tony Green to the 37, already to the rear of the field. Paul Minnick trying to work his way up. Same with Baskinger, Diego Yepes. Just, uh, quite a few drivers out there. Wow, close out of the line right there, but I believe, yep, the 20 Navarro led it. Got some drivers hitting the wall. That's Carter Friss, and I spoke too soon when that happened. He almost got into 51 right there. Now, if we start seeing this more and more, we will start to see drivers slip to the back and lose out on the draft. So these guys got to be really careful to know how they could race these cars here. So we'll see how this will play out in the later stages. The car hitting the wall at Danger Navarro. I'm kind of not surprised because it was almost scraping the wall earlier. He's off it now. Right 
right now. Everything is settled for the moment. Now Zach Winkle, one of the fictional cards. Lead them down. Got one car in the wall. It's, uh, Kyle Keith in the 40. It's off for now. And you got to be really careful because, you know, you do that, you punch people up, and then all of a sudden you just cause people to really spin out and wreck and it, you know, really hinders them. So you got to be extremely careful coming off these turns. Make one wrong move and well, everyone's going to really be that total issue right here. Ten laps in the books here. Everything's been all good to go. Now, the 24 led that lap, and now here comes one of the first-timers here. I want to say it was Jeff Thomas or Justin Tom. No, Jeff Thomas. I'm sorry. Okay, because I there's so many Jeffs and Justins, it's not even funny. But this is Jeff Thomas. Ouch, the point. Now the nine of Zach Rogers. We've seen when the testing came around, he was definitely one of the stronger guys out here. And yeah, he's doing really good, so. Right now, everyone's doing it in a really calm manner. It's not, it's not really a bad thing, but not really a good thing, because you know, these drivers, they, they make one wrong move, and about half the back go away. But at the same time, we're still seeing that good racing to where they're not going to do something really stupid. James Qual side by side with a fellow Kentucky driver there, Dylan Pote. Pote, he easily led that lap coming off that, that little front stretch right there. Now, on the final lap, Qualls had the right idea. You want to be on that high line, but Posey had just a, too much good of a run. He led that lap. Now, Sky Commons going to the inside here. Now, you got people that are in this that are also spread out throughout the United States that are very well known in the inner, not only just in the inner self, but in our community that come from a long way. You got people from Florida, Illinois, Georgia, California, Texas, Ohio. Just to name some of those states that are there, and they really spread out within there. JT, Georgian driver, is going to lead that lap right there. And wow, James Balls nearly got into the. Uh, I want to say the 37. Yeah, the 37. And then uh, the 10 machine, Jeffrey Finn guy, nearly got into someone right there. They keep it together for the most part. Tell you what, man, if these guys are keeping it calm. We're nearly at the ha actually, yeah, we're nearly at the halfway point. Lap 17. Lap 17, heading into lap 18. That will be the halfway point that will take place here in this race. We're in lap 15 of 39. DJ Curse, and here comes some of the underfunded machines. They're starting to work their way up. You've seen the 92 there not long ago, and then you've seen the 52 lose the lead to the 96. Now the 95 and the 33 are now starting to work their way up to the front, and some of the underfunded machines are now doing their thing. Yep, that's going underneath that 96. He's going to get that lead right there. But looking through the pack, you're seeing the racing has been big from the beginning of the pack to the rear. There's really not been a bad part of racing. Everyone's really racing each other really well here. It's just showing that super speedway skill there of these drivers. So, not surprised I'm seeing good speed like this from everyone here. The main million dollar question that's going to take place is 
who's really going to be out on top and who really is going to be, you know, the one falling back and all that. Car number 14, Johnny Gardner, look underneath the inside of the 51, is going to move him out of the way. He's going to get the spot. And now the 62 of Jonathan Zorlin trying to follow. So while they're doing this right now, we're, a, we're at the halfway point now of this race. So we're going to take a very quick commercial break here. For the Intercell 500, don't go away. Stay tuned. You won't miss much as we'll return very shortly from a very quick commercial break. Welcome back. You have not missed much. We're about ready to head into lap 21 of 39. Angel Navarro out in the lead right now. And things are starting to really heat up with the driving. It's getting a little more intense right now. The 3-4 wide racing is starting to heat up. And these drivers continue to have a little bit of difficulty with that turn one wall there. Some drivers have been hitting it. Some drivers have not been hitting it. You can see everyone here. They're still together in that pack. Not one of them is making any mistakes right there. These drivers know they can go crazy, but they're not going to go too crazy. So you can tell there's a lot of smartness going on with these drivers right here. Now Alex Drayton working with Connor Meyer right there. Alex Drayton is also one of those drivers who got to mention making his first ever NRSL 500 start. Been on the rumor books that he will probably be in the one-offs for the All-Star Race for Xfinity and Cup and could be in next season's Xfinity and Universal Land Cup Series uh, teams there. However, the main thing is he's got to sign up for the Xfinity and also if he goes in the Cup, his best chance is to get on with the team. No teams have announced if anyone's going to really be with him yet, but there's been heavy rumors saying that he is a possible uh, candidate to be in Cup next season. Uh coming in from a free agent standpoint to a team, so we'll see what shall happen with the 40, with the uh, Alex Drayton there. Maybe he'll get that opportunity. I don't know. He's leading this lap right now. He's doing really good. He's been able to stay out of trouble for the most part. He hasn't been really slipping too far back in the pack, so that's a good sign for car number 43 right there. Probably will be the favorite to watch in this uh, in the race. Dylan Pote, the full sitter, all the way in the rear of the field. And our other uh, front row driver, Seth Cole. There he is, up toward the front of the field. But on the outside line, not a good sign right there for car 38. Here comes the 66. That's Brandon Crasta. Good to see Brandon up here trying to get a battle for the win right here. Let's see who's ran the fastest lap so far. That would be the 48 of Alexander Rowe with 41.454. And then a, a tenth behind is the 38 of Seth Cole, the outside pole sitter. So now comes the question is this. With how that's going, and then also third place is separated by another tenth, nearly, really going to take advantage of this and will there be a lap in where a caution not only will come out but also what will really change these drivers Looking on the helicopter angle you are seeing right here they're doing for the most part four wide but nothing too crazy catastrophically major uh, DJ Curse nearly hit that apron right there you've seen in that DJ Kennington machine there See, DJ, he's actually working with the uh, the rookie Carter, well, not the rookie, but the first-timer Carter Prison. I guess you could say he's a rookie for this right here. Hearing a little more. 
more scrapes within the wall. I think one of them was the 31 of Sky Commons. He's got a rear decklet full of the 95, and they're going to at least settle down for the time being. And three cars are starting to slip from the pack, but they'll be able to catch up, though. Jeffrey Finguy, Sky Commons, and Diego Yepes. You can help him out for the later of the run in case we enter with that few laps to go. So we'll see what happens. Man, the 33 of Cold Demon really got the wall right there. Wow, 88 really low on that apron right there. And look at the 75 of Ian Siegel there. Already in right there. Those three drivers now getting that back up to the field there. And now the 11 of Benjamin Miles kind of slipped back a bit. And he got help with the 95 right there. That's what hitting that wall does. It just makes you slip back quite a ways. It's not a good sign. James Walls in that six car there you're seeing in that Avocare Ford. What a really good job driving that wheels out there in that fusion. And here comes Seth Cole, the outside pole sitter, going to the lead. Side by side with the future generation driver Connor Meyer there in the inner cell. Now, a lot of people in this race are racing in the Xfinity and Universal and or Universal Orlando Cup series. Just to name a few of those drivers. They include Seth Cole, Zach Winkle, Dylan Pote, Trent Dunham, uh, R.J. Bishop, Benjamin Miles, J.T. Bryant, D.J. Curtis, Connor Meyer, James Qualls, Johnny Gardner. See, I can go on and on about the other drivers that, that have. But those are just the name of you. A lot of those people are there. Oh, my God. They're, are they trying to go five wide? For, for a minute, I thought they were going to go five wide, but they're not being that risky. They're, they're staying with four. And I don't blame them. That's something you don't want to really do there. You do five wide, that's game over right there. You really don't want to do that in this track. You really don't want to do that five wide. That's what's going to kill the car right there. It's going to just cause a huge issue. You could tell they're trying, though. They are trying it, and I have no idea why they're trying to do it. That's not good. Now they're starting to get really intense, but you notice this we're less than 10 laps to go now in the race. These are where the more riskier moves are starting to come on in, and if it doesn't work out, we're probably going to see a wreck. Oh, 42 in the wall there. Vince Almarego. Really in the wall again. Starting to check up some of the drivers on that outside line right there. They're all trying to pass. Four wide position right there. It's on them. Uh, Bishop. Justin Scott. And now the 88 of William Brock. The laps are ticking down, though, and it's just going to be a matter of time. But I think the main question everyone's wondering is this, though. What really is going to happen? Oh, it's Donham and the 12 both got in the wall. Wow. And I thought I seen one of them dip, and they almost did. It was close. It was close. Trying to make sure they hang on, but some of these guys kind of lost that pack a bit. They need to hurry up and get single file so they can work together to be back in that pack battling for that win there. Now, I've been amazed, though, is that we did not have a caution in this race entirely. Because at a point, when we did testing for this before, there was only one caution in the race. It happened on turn one. And the 12 
really got on the wall, and that's not good for Michael Wall, and he has slipped in the pack, and that could make him be the first car to lose the pack right there, and that's not what you want to do if you're Michael Walton. Now he's trying to stay in that draft with the 13 of Carter Frisson. Try to do what he can there. Oh, drivers are coming down pit road on 1X. I don't believe it. Those drivers include Justin Scott, Emmanuel Harnett, Michael Walton, and Clint Spillman. Now these drivers got to watch their fuel gauge. Well, I never thought that I'd be able to say that, man. Who's going to come on down this time by? This is going to be rather interesting to see, nonetheless. And a bunch of drivers on down. The three car really hit that banking hard. And he'll... Oh, the caution's out! The caution is out! Ed Siegel's going to leave them down, but that was something drivers did not want to see. Especially the ones who, who just left pit road. One car smoking. See a black car, I can't tell that is. Oh, that's Brandon Crasta. Heavy front end damage for the 66. I think all the drivers are going to be on the lead lap, even these drivers. He looks like he's the only car with major damage. I don't see any other car there that's got very minor damage. I don't, I don't think. And Ben's got a little bit of rear end damage. I don't know what the case is. Oh, the 24's got a lot of rear end damage. I think the keyword thing, we may know what had happened, but one car is out of the race, at least. We're just keeping an eye on it to make sure everyone is all good to go. These guys are trying to pass some of these cars that they were able to beat. When they had passed the pit road line, the exit. Now all the leaders are coming on down pit road, you can see. James Qualls is going to stay out, though. Same for Johnny Gardner. Zach Flickinger. I think those are the first set of, the first set of guys. Not the first, or excuse me, the second set of guys came down pit road. Caution it out. I'm just going to take a look after Brandon Crasta. Well, I'm not entirely sure what's going to bring out the caution, but we kind of know what's going to happen with Brandon Kraft how he got that damage. As you see, drivers are coming on down pit road. Some of them are also really on the brakes here. I don't know what really is going to say that brought the yellow out, but you see Kraft gets a run there. He gets pushed by the four of Fitzwater, who just, died, just absolutely clobbers the 24. And they're right there. There's where the yellow is out. But you see no one has spun around on the track. Basically just one of those smash and cautions out. There you go. But a rather surprising call. Nonetheless, I don't know why that brought out the caution. But it is what it is, though. So that's a look what happened. Let's go take it back to the green. Oh, and they're about ready to go green. And two drivers coming on down pit road. That'd be James Qualls and Johnny Garter. So now the new unofficial leader will be Zach Flickinger. I don't know why these guys didn't, you know, hit. But that was a dumb decision there. They gotta know it's a it's a one-off. It's not really, you know, for positions or anything like that. But, well, this is a big mess up on their part. But Zach Flickinger can lead them down with three to go. Green flag back underway. We're going to already determine two drivers that's also not going to win this race. Now, will these guys be all right after pit stops? Or they, or are some of those guys going to dive in one more time? That is a heartbreaker for James Walls and Johnny Gardner. They had to come down pit road. Something to miss on them too. And that is a heartbreaker. In the meantime, on the back straight. Getting the two laps to go when we cross the line. Joshua Osborne trying to hold off Brett Richard and others. Richard now up in the point. Check if anyone's coming on down pit road. Nope, everyone's good. 
Trencher, though, going to lead them down with two laps to go. Here comes Paul Minnick and Emmanuel Hartnett. But four wide comes the 19 of Baskinger. Now it's going to be three wide for third as the battle for the lead is ensuing between Minnick and Pritchard. Now Emmanuel Hart using that middle line. And Hartnett now three wide for the lead. Heading to the white flag here at Armory Digital. Buckle up tight, folks. We're going to get a good finish. Bastinger is probably going to be the one to beat right there for Emmanuel Hartnett. That's probably going to be his competition. White flag is out for Emmanuel Hartnett in the car number 32. The Diburito. Ford as Pritchard's gonna smack the wall. Here comes Baskinger, he's got the lead. Now Bishop is coming. Here comes the 34. With Justin Thomas. Two well known veterans. Here comes RJ Bishop. Now look at the under funny guys. They're gonna go three wide for position. Four wide actually for third. Bishop in the run, trying to get the lead. He's got it. Now he's got to try to hold him off. I think he's not going to have to worry about it. He can just do what he can from here. Checker flag is in hand, and R.J. Bishop is your inner self 500 winner in the sixth annual. He wins it at Armory Digital. R.J. Bishop is going to get the job done. I'm very happy for the young man. He's done it. And that has got to be an exciting moment for the Monster Energy Ford. There you see your results you're seeing on the left side of your screen. They're now official. Kev Shear had a header issue. Did not notice that at all. But here's a look at your results here one last time. Congratulations, RJ Bishop. The sixth annual NRSL 500 winner. His name is etched onto the record books. Till then, this is your boy, 8675309858, signing off saying thank you for the six years in the inner cell. Hope you guys enjoyed the race. Until then, I will see you guys later. Adios, amigos.